pumped and fired up for, you know, um, as I bring God's word tonight. Um, one of the themes that was running in my mind, and uh, Sneha kind of mentioned that as she was hosting our service, that the song that she loves the most uh, during Christmas season is, All I Want for Christmas is You. I don't know if I sang that in the right way or not, but um, here, here's the lyrics. I'm not going to test my myself or um, put myself on online media by singing it, but this is how the lyrics go, and I love this song. I'll tell you the reason behind why I love this song, because Anisha is not here. This is how it goes. I don't want a lawful Christmas. There is just one thing I need. I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. Oh, how romantic. I just want you for my own. More than you could ever know. Make my wish come true. Oh, I don't know how oh goes there, but all I want for Christmas is you. I still remember this is before Anisha walked into my life. Um, this song, somebody called me one day when I was in school and uh, she made me hear this song. And uh, Anisha, I'm sorry if you are hearing this for the very first time. Let's be just open and uh, transparent. And uh, maybe on the online media, you're watching this, but hey, let's go. So, uh, so um, she called me and made me listen to this beautiful song. And back then, I had no clue about what this is. Um, uh, and uh, I was in love with the song and also the person who shared that song with me. But then um, life happened. But then um, I met Anisha and life changed forever. All I want for Christmas is you. And that's what I want to bring our attention to us as we gather our thoughts together on Christmas 2020 Christmas Eve service. Of course, we have our houses are all decked up with Christmas lights and trees. And under the trees, we have a lot of presents that you might see in our building. We have lights. And, you know, usually this year we went a little down because we know that not a lot of people are coming in. But usually we're all out for Christmas season because we believe together as a church building and church body that this is the greatest season for us to shine and let the world know that Jesus is the reason of the season. No matter what happens, what goes on, everything else will fade away. In a matter of two weeks or three weeks, we will take all of these lights down and um, uh, everything will go down. But again, listen, there's one light that shines throughout for eternity. It is the light of Jesus and that gives us hope in a darkened world. No matter where your life situation is today, but I want to just bring your attention to it, that fall in love with Jesus once again. That this this Christmas, we dedicate ourselves, we understand, we allow Jesus, and we allow the presence of God, and we let Him know God in all of the chaos that I am in, my family is in, my situation in it is in, my choices are in, but in all of this, all I need and I desire is you this Christmas season. Nothing else matters to me more than you. The King of the Universe, listen to this, the King of the Universe chose to be born in a manger so that you and me don't have to live a life in the manger. Are you with me? The king of the universe chose himself to be born in the most lowliest place so that you and me can have a life of abundance and a life of abundance in Christ Jesus. People were expecting that the king will be born in a palace, but cutting down all of their expectations, Christ was born in the manger so that you and me can have a life of abundance in it through Christ Jesus. Matthew chapter 2, verse 9, 10, and 11 is where I want to gather our thoughts together for tonight. This is how it goes. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. Verse 10. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with great delight on coming to the house. They saw the child with his mother Mary, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, uh, frankincense and myrrh. When you read through Mark, Matthew chapter 2, verse 9, 10, and 11, a beautiful depiction of the scene, the nativity scene over here, a story that helps us understand the birth of Jesus into our world of hopelessness and utter chaos. 
What exactly was going on back then is exactly what we are going through in the year 2020. A year filled with confusion, a year filled with hatred, a year filled with a lot of chaos everywhere. But even in the midst of that, we have a good news to share to the world around. And it is that Jesus, who was born in the manger 2,000 years ago, he is still alive and he is risen and he is with us. If you just allow him and allow his spirit to dwell in you, he says, I am all there for you during this season when your life is filled with chaos everywhere. This is how it goes. I want to bring three important things from what we learn and understand here. First thing that I want to bring your attention towards is that when you read through the portion here in Matthew chapter 2, verse 9, 10, 11, the first portion that you see is when the uh, they heard about the birth of Jesus, they all rejoiced with great Delight. Verse 10 helps us understand when they saw the star, when they saw the star, they understood, you know, a couple of days ago, uh, if you all haven't yet, um, I was, I just drove into my house and uh, my neighbor walks in and she like, Justin, did you see the, the star of Bethlehem, the Jesus star? I'm like, what's going on? And that's when I, uh, she took me outside and along with Josiah, we just walked outside to see the star of Bethlehem. And for me, I'm like, uh, I don't see anything because it's hazy and it's not so clear. And I'm like, okay, why don't I go to uh, my Facebook or TV just to watch a better clarity of what's happening in our world. World. And, and and then I saw the, the star of Bethlehem so beautiful when when the, 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 these two planets came together and that radiance, that, that, that light just sh uh, shined everywhere. I don't know if that's the exact star that the kings were following when they saw in the New Testament. I don't know, but one thing that is for sure, when these three kings, the wise men, they saw the star, they were filled with rejoice. They were not, sorry, celebrating. They, they were filled with so much uh, 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 that they rejoiced with great delight. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The, the wise men, when they saw the star, they filled with so much joy. They were seeking out for a deliverer. They were seeking out for somebody who would be uh, uh, born in the time and season that they were living in. And a time and season was filled with chaos and confusion. They were waiting for the appearance of the one who would probably come and save the world, save humanity. And that's where you see the appearance of the star depicted that Jesus or Christ or Messiah was born. The three wise men looked at it and they were filled with so much joy. Even today, wise men still seek Jesus. Are you with me, church? Wise men still seek Jesus. Now, if you are seeking Jesus with all of your heart, you are also counted in the group of the wise men. Why do I say that? Because you see in the story in Matthew chapter 9, that the wise men saw the star. The moment they saw the star, their life and everything that was going on within their life changed for Forever. Their hopelessness changed to hope. Their, their life's grief changed to in, uh, rejoicing in delight in the presence of God. Because one thing they understood, if there is something that can push back darkness, if there is something that can change whatever they are going through into a season of joy and happiness, it is only through the Son, Jesus, who was born in the manger. They looked at the star and they saw and understood that it is through Messiah. This is the Messiah. It is through this child that God is going to deliver the world. The first thing that we see here, when the king or the wise men saw the star, they were filled with joy. And that's why, you know, when people come to the house of God, when people come to worship Jesus in the church, when we sing songs, there are a lot of people who are filled with so much joy. I know there are families who are going through real bad situations in their home, in their job, in their school. But when they come to the house of the Lord, I see they put on a smile and it is not a fake smile. Because as a pastor, I know that they love the community of brothers and sisters in this house. And not just that, when they are here to worship the one that we seek, He gives us joy in our life. Come on somebody, are you here to trade your sorrows to joy? It happens only in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you with me church? 
and even the online audience, no matter what you're facing, my dear friends, families gather across from different parts of the world. In When we are ready to surrender ourselves, we're surrendering our grief, our pain, our sorrow, our turbulent times into the hands of God and just allowing the Spirit of the Lord to bless us with this. He's going to trade a, a, a joy of the Spirit uh, in your life. And, and this happens, one of the most important things that you have to understand is in, in Matthew chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, when you read, when the, the wise men saw the star, they were filled with joy. They were filled with joy. Are you seeing the star of our world, Jesus, the way you should be seeing. Let me take your attention to it. It's another thought with the same scripture here. When the wise men saw the star, the star led them to Jesus. That's how we read the portion. Let me read it for you guys so that we can understand once again. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with great delight on coming to the house they saw the child with his mother mary they fell down and worshiped him then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and and myrrh verse 9 after they had heard the king i'm just rewinding it after they had heard the king they went on their way and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them what does it mean they saw a star and they kept following it. And my, my question to everybody watching me right now is, can you become that star through which people will follow you to Jesus? Are you with me? And you might think that, you know what, my ministry is of no significance. I'm just playing in the background. But brother, sister, no matter where you are plugged in to work, you may not even stand on the pulpit, but in your workspace, in your school, among your peers, among your friends, no matter where God has placed you, you can become that star that leads people to the saving grace of His knowledge. Hallelujah! Each of us, we have a mandate, we have a calling that is placed in our life. We can become that star that navigates and shows people and brings them from their hopelessness, from their chaos, from their mistakes and grabs them and puts them on the rock that Jesus Christ is. That their life will not be doomed and destroyed. But together we can help a generation to follow Jesus. Can you become that star, my friends? Wise men are still seeking Jesus. But can you, church people, become that star? It's easy for us to pinpoint and, 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 and put somebody down and gather around somebody and, and, and trash them. And, and it's easy for us to do that. But can you become the light of His glory and His grace? The light of His glory and His grace. All Christ has asked us to do is be the light in the world. And it is through your light, people are going to see who Jesus is. It is through the light of the church that people are going to see who Jesus is. It is through the light of yours. You let, you, let the light of Christ shine through our life. Let you, may you become the star in this world. This dark world, people are ready to complain how dark our world is. There's so many uncles who would say, Oh, Pangra Andagaru Mana. Pangra Paisha Shiga Pora Tamana. Sagodra, Avade in the complaint to Parana La Vilichirikine. Christo Vaishu in the Vendi Kathi in the Thip on the Mai Marvo. Christo Vaishu in the Vendi Kathan Hero Juale I Marvo. Christo Nine Ubioi can agrikino. God wants to use you. God wants to use each one of us. In this room, you might sit in the in, in, in the AV booth over there. You might like, you know, I'm just doing lyrics. There's nothing else I could do. All I do is lyrics. My team has asked me to do this. Or behind the camera, Aaron, you might be sitting there. You're like, go, oh, Pastor, please don't take my name. You put me on spot here. But yes, my thing that, you know what? My worth is just, my team has asked me to pan the cameras and put Pastor on the spot all the time. But brother, your ministry is valuable. And every single one of us in this room, no matter what we do, you are the star that the wise men are seeking. And through you, they will reach Christ Jesus.
And that is the hope of Christmas. And today, whatever we are doing here, we just want to be that light visible outside in the dark world. I mean, there are so many people who are complaining about the darkness outside. Yes, you need the darkness for the moon to shine. You need the darkness. And as it gets darkened, let your light shine brighter in their life. And I pray, as people look to your life, they will see Christ Jesus. Number one, this entire season, uh, we looked into, first of all, they rejoice. Give people a reason to rejoice and celebrate. Give people a reason through your life, your conduct, some acts of service. You know, uh, when you go out, just, just random acts of kindness to somebody's life. Just pour in into their life. Can we do it? I think we can. And all of us, we can. The lowest we could do is, the least we could do is, you know, we're driving by and we see a homeless man, help them. Give something that their holidays is cheered as well. This Christmas season, there are so many people that we know that might be sleeping under the bridges of our cities who have no home in these cold winter days. But can I just pray you as a pastor? Can I just preach you just helping us understand that let us become, give or donate something. Just a random act of kindness into their life so that you become the visible light of His glory in their life. There are so many people in our cities, in our neighborhoods. There are so many people that we know in our connections, in our contacts who are going through some deep struggles in their life or family. May us come around them. Don't just ask them a message, how are you doing? But go for them. Even in the midst of the global pandemic, the church should not fear and, and sit in the closet. But I believe the church, this is our finest hour. When the world is filled with darkness and the hopelessness is around us. This is the finest hour of our church to rise up. Leave behind the shackles to declare, you know what? I know there is dark in the world outside, but I am here to shine the light of His glory. To us, we can do it. Number two that I want to mention here is, always understand, it's not about the presence. And all is good. And I put, you know, presents under the Christmas tree for my son, Josiah. He's all about it. He's excited to open his presents. But yesterday, I remembered, um, I heard Anisha saying this to him. Josiah, one thing we need you to understand even though he's really, really small to get it. But it's not about this present. Is it about Jesus? It is about Jesus. Listen to this. His presence is my present. We are waiting for a present in our life. We are waiting for gifts in our life. We are waiting for our center to come, our, our, our white elephant to give us, you know, our secret center to come, give us our, our gifts. We are just waiting for somebody to give us something. And I love, I'm a, I'm a, my, my love language is receiving gifts. Y'all, I'm here, okay? Christmas tomorrow. But this season, let us understand, His presence is our present. And that is the story of Christmas where it says that Emmanuel, what does it mean? God with us. In Exodus, you see the story 34, 33, verse 14. It says, the Lord replied, my presence will go with you. It's the story of Moses. He's, he's, he's afraid, he's scared. But here he says, my, my, my presence will go with you. And I will be with you the way I was with Moses. Now, listen, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us from here. These are the words of Joshua. We see two conversations there. In the life of Moses, God promised that I'm going to go with you. My presence will go with you. And in the life of Joshua, God said, you know what, Joshua? The way I was with your, your, your leader, Moses, I'm going to be with you. My presence is going to be with you. And today, I don't know if you are listening to me for the very first time. You were just stumbling on our Facebook page and this is the word you're hearing. My friend, you might be in a situation filled with hopelessness and chaos. But here's the word of hope into your life. As God was with all the saints of the Bible, He says that I will be with you. And that is the story of Christmas that Emmanuel God, in other words, God is with us. Not a leader who is born, who lived their life and now dead and gone. 
But he's the leader. He says, I'm going to be with you. Where are you in life journey? Are you in, in, a, in a place where you think that you are lonely? That there's nobody around you to help you? That you think that, I don't think my parents know what I'm going through. I don't think my friends know what I'm going through. I can put up a mask and shine and be happy in front of everybody. But deep down, I'm broken. I'm bruised. I, I, I can't live. There could be, that could be you, my friend. That could be you. But the good news, of, good news of Christmas is Jesus is for us. Emmanuel says, God with us. Listen to this. this the third aspect of the kings, um, the wise men visiting Jesus there. The, 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 the third aspect is they worshipped Jesus. Now listen, it is very important for us to know that each of us here, we are made to worship. Created to worship. Although we all live our individual lives. But there is something that our human, our spiritual world is offering. In other words, God created us so that we could worship Him. And that doesn't mean that 24 by 7 we sing songs and we say hallelujah and amen and walk around. But worship is our, our attitude. Worship is the way we live. Worship is the way we interact. Worship is the way we communicate. Worship is the way I express myself. It's not just two songs. It's not just the, when, when Benjamin goes on high beat and we all celebrate singing tongues. And there are so many people that I know and I'm coming for all the religious people. It's good that you sing in Anyabasha and, and worship God for 20 minutes. But if you cannot tell I am sorry in English or whatever language that you speak, then I don't think God is pleased with your 20 minutes of Anyabasha. Let me be honest. We can sing songs to worship God. We can sing in our tongues and worship in this house. Let everybody know that. But if when a small grudge is not taken down, when a small uh, uh, grievance between, between you know, families is not addressed, and you can't even say, uh, I am sorry. And if he can do that, I don't think heaven is pleased with our worship. Listen to this. When the, the disciples, when the, the wise men approached Jesus, they saw Jesus. Listen what did they, what they did. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. They fell down and worshipped him. Listen, all of us, we worship something in our life. Something or the other we worship in our life. As a human being, God has created that we could worship God. But as we navigate and journey on in life, we are prone to worship something else that has attracted us. And there are things that has come across in our path that we are worshiping today. It could be our money or job. It could be, could be our uh, whatever. You can name it. There's something that you're worshiping. And that has become, whatever you give your time to, it has become the idol in your life. And that idol seeks worship. And today, listen, the wise men sought after Jesus. When they saw him, they fell down and they worshipped Jesus. That's the story of Christmas. The story of Christmas is about us knowing who exactly saves us and coming to his presence and saying, God, I am sorry for the days that I have led my life astray. But today I'm here to offer my worship to the true king. Do I have some worshipers in this house? Do I have some worshipers listening to me? Church, the most important thing in our life is to worship Jesus. Worship Jesus. Worship Jesus. Even when we don't have a musical background, even when we don't have a worship leader leading us, you can still worship God. You don't need a, a, a music set and you don't need all that to you, you to be a worshiper. I mean, that helps us in a church situation. We need our worshipers. We need our music instruments. But even when everything is gone dead, you can still be a worshiper. Choose today 
to be a worshiper of Jesus Christ. Listen to the fourth thing that the, the, the wise men did. And I'm going to wind up here. The fourth thing that they did, as you read here, is that they fell down, worshipped him. Then they opened their bags. Or in, the, in my translation here, it says, they opened their treasures. What all they gave? They gave gold. They gave uh, frankincense. And they gave myrrh to uh, baby Jesus as the gift. And yesterday somebody sent me this uh, this picture and they say, hey, well, uh, why did the wise men, if they were wise enough to give Jesus gold, frankincense and myrrh, why didn't they give Jesus, baby Jesus, some diapers? You know, because that's what babies need the most. And Sean, I think you can second with me. We have a five-month-old baby girl at home and that's what babies need. But here's the wise men. The Holy Spirit helped them understand what baby Jesus' life would be. Gold represented the kingship of Jesus. Frankincense represented the priestly hood of Jesus. He's the chief priest. Mir represented the sacrifice that he's going to make for us. There are three gifts that uh, uh, the, the, the wise men presented to Jesus. And each of it had a meaning to it. Each of it had a meaning to it. Listen, the first and most important thing for us to ask this question to ourselves here. Is that most of the time I come across people who say, what will I gain? If I come to church, what will I gain if I worship? Can I tell you, if that is the equation, if that is the question that you have, you are wrong, my friend. It's not about what you gain. That is a business transaction. But here's the story. The wise men came to give what they had to worship Jesus. And whenever you come to the house of the Lord, we come not in an attitude of what will I get, but we come in an attitude of what can I give? What can I give? My giving helps somebody's life. My giving is what is more important because that is directly related to my heart's condition. Where your heart is, your money is. Where is your heart today? Your money is, your treasure, wherever your treasure is, your heart is. Where is your heart today? And here the wise men, they chose to come to the presence of Jesus and they gave him the most important thing. The most important thing here and that is the, the gifts. They opened their bags. A lot of people come to church every Sunday. They come, they close their bags and they go back without even giving him any worship. A lot of people come and we, I mean, when I say bags, it's not just, I'm not hinting about your money. If you want to give that, God bless you. But I'm talking to you about your praises. When you are in the presence of God, open up and worship Him. Celebrate the goodness of what He has done in our life. And all through 2020, worship team, we can have, um, uh, we can surely go into the next song. But listen, 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 before we wind up here, this entire season, this entire season, this entire season, Christ is what we are seeking for. And that's what you see. They opened their bags when they saw him. Church, I'm just asking this question to everybody. I know most of our, 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 our on, audience is on the online platform. What are you willing to give today? Don't hold back your praise. Your praise gives you the breakthrough what you're going through. Don't hold back your praise today. The reason of celebration is Christ Jesus. He is the only one who deserves our worship and adoration. We gather together today and we can celebrate. God, I give you glory and honor because I have seen how messy my life was. But you stepped into that messiness and you have rescued my soul. Listen, y'all. His presence, that's why I, I want to bring your attention to words. Back into that scripture. His presence is the present that I need in my life. And that song by Mariah Carey here is so valuable. That we look through those lines there. Look through those lines there. And we understand, God, your presence is valuable in my life. And there's nothing more that I seek this Christmas Eve. I just want to invite everybody to gather around to just call upon the name of our Savior and to declare, Lord, all I need in this Christmas is you. 
if we could just make that commitment. I know all through 2020, I was going through some of the toys that my son had. And I saw a magnifying glass that he had asked me a couple of months ago to do his experiments. And I took this in my hands and I looked at some of the stuff on my table. I had cleaned it, but still I could see some specks, some dust. What happened is the smallest thing that was there on my desk was magnified when I used the magnifying lens. And that's what it does. That's the job of the magnifying lens. And all through 2020, friends, we've been using our magnifying lens and just magnifying the problems, the struggles, the chaos, the circumstances that we are in. You're just magnifying it. But can I tell you what you magnify becomes bigger and bigger and bigger in our life. Whatever you magnify, becomes bigger in our life. But today I'm just going to ask you, take your magnifying lens and magnify Jesus. Because as you magnify the name of our Savior, He's going to be enthroned on our praise. And today, as you look into this, as you look and as you take a magnifying lens, if you have been focusing on the specs, focusing on the small little flaws, the small little things and issues that has just taken your joy away, but take it back again. Magnify on Jesus. Take it back again. Magnify Jesus in your life. And as you magnify Jesus, that small little things that created so much commotion in our life will mean nothing. Today, I'm encouraging our church. Can we all rise up in God's house as we worship our King? Let there be an attitude of worship in this building. Let there be an attitude of worship on our online platform. As we gather together to declare the three things that the wise men did. Number one, they followed the star. Number two, they worshiped Jesus. Number three, they opened their backs. They opened their backs. Today I'm asking us, can we all join together to give our Jesus the glory and honor that only His name deserves. Because there is nobody else who is valuable, who cares about us like He does. Let's start magnifying the small things. Let's magnify Jesus in our life. Let us sing some songs and worship our Savior. And I believe in the powerful name of our Savior who's bringing a breakthrough in this house. Hallelujah.